Do open houses actually work when you're trying to sell your home or is it just a big waste of time and there are better things you could do with your Saturday than, um, than letting a bunch of people run through your house. My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams in South Central Alaska. And my mission is to help you build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching one real estate. And today we're gonna to be talking about open houses. Does it make sense for your property? Should we plan to have one or should we just leave that off our marketing plan? So. We're gonna be talking about all that in just a couple minutes before we get started though. Do make sure you give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's go and jump into today's video. So this may surprise you, but only about 4% of buyers who went and purchased a property did so because they found their house at an open house. So it is very, very low, very uncommon that you have somebody walk into an open house they like the house and they just make an offer on it because they went to the open house. So with that being the case, why all this spilled ink over open houses? How come real estate agents or real estate licensees really seem to, to really like open houses and really seem to promote them? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just disclose my bias. Um, I personally do not like open houses. I find them to be very, very gimmicky. They're kind of awkward because you get people who come in there, they have to sign in and some bum refuse to do it. And it's like, well, you know, what now? Do I seriously just tell these people to just get out of here because they're, they're not signing in? You know, which is probably exactly the right thing to do because, you know, you're letting these folks into someone else's home and we need to have accountability and who's there and how to get in contact with them if something goes missing, really is what I'm thinking. So, you know, for that reason, I personally never really liked open houses. I, I've done, you know, a number of them when I was first getting started. Not particularly, you know, hop in. I didn't really see them selling a whole lot of the houses, I open houses that I hosted them for. Um, actually, the very first house I ever sold was from an open house where they, they came in, they liked the place, and then they ended up buying that property. That was kind of a one in a million shot and it is definitely not ever, I've never come close to doing that again. So yeah, open houses, they can be useful, but the utility and the usefulness of an open house isn't really in the people that are gonna be coming through the door. The usefulness of an open house is gonna be from people getting that marketing chance to get the house back out there in the public's eye. So broadcasting it, talking about it again, um, getting, uh, more interest going for this this property that's out there. That's really what the open house is going to be there to do, and you know that's um, that's good from a certain perspective because it gives you the chance to have that second round of publicity where we kind of have that initial launch and you know we had our flyers, had our posters everywhere, um, did our videos, and that's that's great and that goes a long way. Um, but yeah, the open house kind of gives it a second round of that because now it's advertising you know the open house that's at that house. So that's really the utility of it for you as a seller. Uh, most agents are really gonna like open houses because it gives them a chance to, to really get in front of more people and to be able to talk with neighbors and to be able to talk with buyers who are coming through the door to see if they are represented or not. So yeah, that's really gonna be why a lot of people really do like open houses. There are some agents that have kind of built their entire uh, career their entire pipeline off of open houses. You know, it works. It's not a bad thing. Some people do it a lot better than others. Um, you know, obviously, I guess I just never really cracked the code to make it like really work for me. But a lot of these folks that are doing really well, they're not necessarily getting a, a million people in there every time. So it's not useless open houses. I, I don't know if it's, you know, the best use of our time just based off of what it is you're trying to do with your property. So let's go and talk a little bit about the factors that might impact whether or not this is a good strategy for you. Before we get started though, um, let's go and take a break real quick here. And um, just want to let you guys know that I do host a seller seminar every last Saturday of the month. So this month in June, it's going to be uh, the 25th Saturday. It's usually going to be pretty early in the afternoon. It's going to be an online seller seminar. So you can go ahead and find links to, to RSVP for that. In July, that's going to be the 30th of July as well. You can't make the one in June. So do make sure that uh, you plan to attend those. It's usually a pretty laid back place where we kind of get um, interact back and forth 
and get to hear any questions or concerns you have in a format that's really convenient for everybody. So yeah, do make sure that you attend that. Now, looking specifically as to whether or not it makes sense for you to um, to do an open house. So it's gonna depend on the property. If we're talking, you know, obviously anything multifamily, it may or may not make sense depending if you have a unit that's already vacant. Usually it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. Now, if you have, you know, a nice little condo or something like that, that's in a really, really nice area, it's really tricked out and people want to go look at it, then yes, that might actually be a really good candidate for an open house. If it's a really remote place, it's not likely going to be a great open house because not a whole lot of people are going to go driving all the way out there. And if they are going to drive out there, it's because they're motivated and they want it anyway. And they're just going to go schedule a showing. So it's not going to get a whole lot from an open house on that one. Um, that's not to say there's no value, just, you know, might not be the, the open house that everybody goes and attends. Now, another open house kind of property where it'd be a great open house location would probably be something in area where there's kind of a high density of housing. Like if you have a, a little suburb, um, that would be a you know, great opportunity for an open house over there. And you probably get some pretty good traffic in there. Um, it's probably going to be more the, the neighbors more so than anyone else. Because like I said, we have a really motivated buyer in this market, usually they're not going to wait for the open house. They're going to get their agent and they're going to get in there quick and they're going to see it and they're going to be gone. So, you know, it's, it's not real cut or dry one way or the other. If open houses are going to work for your specific property, um, if it's just kind of a so-so property and uh, it's not really tricked out, doesn't have like a, a million updates and remodels and everything in there, you know, again, it, you just kind of have to weigh that out and let you decide for yourself if it's going to make sense to, to go down that route. So I sure hope this is uh, this made it a little bit more clear. I'm sorry that uh, probably became you know clear as mud, but it's really going to come down to the specific property that we're looking at and the area that it's in. If you have something that's more updated, more modern, and a little bit more in a suburban area, that's probably going to be a much better candidate. You're going to get a little bit more bang for your buck there. If it's not really updated and there's nothing really about it that really stands out in a big way, then yeah, it's remote and you know that might not be a great open house opportunity for you as a seller but yeah you know, i'm not uh, not trying to knock open houses in general i'm just saying in general you know what we're seeing is only four percent of buyers bought their house from an open house so you kind of have to weigh that against the, the pros and cons and the cost that it takes for you to, to step out for the weekend to make that happen um, or, you know, any other time they would make it happen. If you're going to be out anyway, not a bad idea. But anyway, um, I sure hope this was useful for you and you had kind of some, some food for thought here. If it's been useful, do make sure you get this video a like. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will see you next time.